Hello, Keith Ruck here at VintageMachinery.org. I'm out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture today in their shop, and uh, we're going to be doing a little quick project out here uh, that's going to require some welding. I don't yet have a welder at my shop, so that's the main reason I'm out here doing this. Uh, but we will be out here continuing to do work out here at this shop from time to time, uh, particularly when we're working on projects for the museum. Uh, but the project for the day is, is I'm needing to make some leveling feet for my Wells Index milling machine. Uh, when we had the mill here at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture shop before I had my shop built, uh, we just had it sitting directly on the floor. And uh, there really isn't a good way built into that machine to level the, the, the individual parts of the machine to get it level. One problem that we had here before when the machine was here was the floor in this shop was not perfectly level. And I actually had to get wedges and, and wedge it up in different places just to keep the machine from rocking. Uh, well, I wanna make sure I prevent that in my new shop. Plus I really wanna get the machine truly level. So there are four little uh, bosses around the machine that have a little slot in them. And what I'm going to do is I'm kind of adapting some leveling feet that my buddy Mike Wiggins, uh, the backyard machine shop guy, he's got the same machine I did. And this is a kind of a take on what he built for his. Mine's a little bit different, but pretty much pretty similar nonetheless. So what I've got here, for the actual feet, I, I went to McMaster car and looked. And because of the size of the, the, the stud, it's a 7 8 inch um, stud that needs to go through them. I could buy leveling feet from them, but they were like 40 or $50 a piece, you know, 15, 20 bucks a piece. Yeah, I'd probably just buy them. Uh, but at that price, it was just going to be a little bit too much. So I'm basically going to make my own. Uh, these are a little bit different from the ones that we master. The one from McMaster have a pad, uh, but the, the, the part that the screw goes in, it actually will swivel. Mine isn't going to swivel, but I don't think it's going to matter. So basically what I'm building this out of is I got some 3 8 inch cutouts. These are, what, probably four inches in diameter, I'm guessing. I didn't measure them, three and a half, four inches in diameter. Uh, these were just from someone that has a uh, plasma cutter, and these were some holes that were cut out. And I, I picked up a bunch of these in the shop. The guy just said, here, take them. So uh, I've been using these for feet pads to go under machines. I'm going to take a um, 7 8 inch nut. We're going to weld it to that. Now I'm using uh, fine threads rather than coarse threads on my my bolt here just to, for two reasons. Number one, it gives you a little bit finer adjustment, but also um, the threads on fine thread will actually hold more than uh, the threads on a, a, a coarse thread. So that's the reason we're going with the fine threads. So we're going to weld those in place. Um, I've got a section of um, threaded rod here. I need to cut this into four six inch pieces. This one here is two feet long. And also I need to make some uh, little support pads, I guess you call them. So I got some material here. We're going to cut these into three inch long pieces and basically punch a seven eighths inch hole. There'll be one on the top and bottom. And they'll kind of sandwich in between there. So that's my game plan. So let's get over here and get to work getting it done. So I've got my nuts laid out on here and basically just use a ruler and I, I took some chalk and just kind of went around it. In case I bumped it, I could very quickly get it back to where it needs to be. And uh, these are ready to weld in place now. I'm going to start by just tacking them and then I'll go back and weld them.
So we're moving right along here. I got the feet made. Uh, my next thing here is I need to make up a bunch of these little spacers like this. Uh, so this is a two inch wide material, three inches long, and I'm drilling basically a one inch hole through there, uh, which will allow my seven eighths inch uh, rod to go through with a little bit of clearance. I'm going to use some washers on this. So I didn't want it to be super tight. I want to have a little bit of play in there. And you'll see how this goes together later on when we put it together. Uh, but I've already, I just took some uh, band iron material here, uh, some cold roll. I cut all these to length. So now I need to go finish drilling out all these holes. Also, uh, this is uh, the threaded rod I'm using. And again, this is a uh, seven, eight inch uh, 14, which is a fine thread. And I, I bought a two foot length of this and I just cut it into four, six inch sections here. And uh, these will screw down in my feet and basically give me my adjustment up and down. And again, uh, you can see how it all goes together in a little bit. So right now, let's go drill some holes. I would much rather be doing this on my milling machine, uh, but my shop doesn't have any power in it right now because I'm upgrading my service. So we're going to drill these over here on the uh, drill press. Um, start out with a half inch hole. I got some parallels up underneath this. Uh, I've already gone in and marked them. It's a little bit off center. I did that on purpose just because of the way this needs to go. It's about an eighth of an inch to one side. Um, on the two inch, on, it's on center going across the three inches. So uh, let's go ahead. I've already marked these and center punched them. We'll start with a half inch hole. We'll then swap out, go to a uh, one inch drill here. Let's see if this is going to try to walk around on me. I wish this uh, drill press had a variable speed. Yeah, it's a little bit fast for that size, but uh, I don't really have a good way to change speeds on this drill press. Anyway, rinse and repeat guys, got uh, eight of these to knock out. So I put a coat of paint on these feet here and uh, they're pretty much ready to start assembling now. So again, I've already got my threaded rod cut to length. These are six inches long. I'm just gonna screw that down in there till it bottoms out. Um, then we're gonna uh, grab my nuts here. Then we'll uh, put on a, a nut on the bottom. Basically, there's gonna be two nuts here and they will sandwich the uh, base of the mill in place. And we can adjust the height by adjusting these two screws here up and down. So uh, we're just gonna go ahead and put this on. Um, We'll probably kind of preset them all to about the same height, which will just make it a little bit easier for me when we start leveling. Let me grab a rule. I'm just gonna make the top of the nut about two inches. Next thing we'll do is we'll put a washer on here and then my little spacer that we made uh, the mill, the base of the mill will go in between this. We'll put another spacer on top. Um, next, we're going to put on another washer. And uh, this washer is actually a little bit narrower, not washer, because it's going to have to go up into a recess, and the big washer won't quite be big enough. Lock washer. And then another nut on the top. And uh, again, this will fit up in the recess and we'll just bolt all this down. So let me get these pre-assembled and we'll get ready to go stick them on the mill. All right, guys, I got the first uh, uh, leveling foot that's already installed there. We're gonna go ahead and put the uh, second one on this side. Um, so since they're already kind of assembled, basically they just kind of 
fit up in this slot. You know, I'm not sure why Wells Index um, made their slots this way. I would much rather have just had a hole through it, but uh, I'm sure they had their reasons. But uh, this is how I've seen other people do this. So we're going to basically copy them and do the same thing here. So let me go ahead and tighten that up. Well, there you go. The feet are installed. Uh, all four feet are on the floor on uh, both sides here. And I think this is gonna do just fine. It's uh, doing exactly what I wanted to do. It's giving me the opportunity to get the machine leveled up, uh, which I have uh, pretty well done. Need to get my actual levels out and fine tune a little bit, but at least I got them where the machine's not rocking. Uh, and uh, the, while my floor in here is pretty level, it's not perfect and uh, we have issues with uh, things rocking a little bit, like the same problem we had at the museum, and this has got it solved. So anyway, set of leveling feet. Well, I realize that was a quickie for a video, but uh, you guys can see how you can easily make a set of leveling feet go on pretty much any machine, uh, particularly if you don't have uh, threads or something in the base where you can adjust it up and down. You know, most of my machines, my uh, my lathes, uh, my surface grinder, they've all got threaded holes so these set screws can go up and down and you put them on something you can adjust them. Uh, both the milling machines are more like this and uh, uh, where you just have to have a, a, a separate leveling foot kind of like this. But I like this setup. Uh, again, it allows me to get the machine level, gets everything where no have no rocking going on, as well as getting it just physically level. And uh, the other thing I like is uh, uh, it gets the machine up a little bit higher. Uh, it fits me a little bit better, just a little bit higher off the ground. And also it allows me to get up underneath these machines uh, to clean stuff. Uh, even though they, they sit down on the floor, I've had issues where something will get up underneath the machine uh, where it's just not perfectly flat on the ground. This way I can get up underneath there and get things out as well. So anyway. That's going to be a wrap. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll talk to you guys later.